Wow. Phenomenal. It's exciting times. Thank you for a full house. Without you, there is no show. You know, you get so excited sitting backstage, you just want to calm down. You just want to slow down. You don't want to go through the whole presentation within five minutes, would you agree? But it's great to be here. I don't know if you know, but in 2003, I had come to San Antonio for a conference as an exhibitor with a small booth to set it up. And today, look at this, a full house for an ECW national conference. That's fantastic. <laughs> 3,500, it's sold out. We know some of you are here, the others at the river walk. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have an exciting time. The product showcase that we have planned this year is the biggest and the best we have ever done. Because we had the time in 2013 to develop amazing products. Because a lot of the other parts of the company are functioning so well. But before I get into it, I ask myself, I'm going to do this so I don't rush through it. Just close my eyes. You know why I do that? When I was a kid and I used to take those tests, I used to get genuinely excited. Very excited to take them. I'd do them fast as I could. Time up, paper given, get back home, look at the questions, and I'd skip many. <laughs> because I never calmed down before I started. So today I said, let me calm down first, get going, spend some time first knowing you well, and then get going into the keynote. 2013 has been another good year for the company. Revenue growth is one size of one way of looking at stability in corporate America. Are we able to invest in growth? And I think we can say that that's the case year in and year out. We haven't slowed down as a company. 85,000 physicians now use eClinical Bricks. 545,000 users. 193 million appointments happened just this year in ECW. It's mind boggling how big it is. Something fun, nice happened as well as a fan this year. The NFL selected eClinical Works. <laughs> and, 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 and the NFL's in the house. Joe and Bill are right here. <clears throat> you know, as a fan, you get excited. I love football. And I'll talk about sports today, but I love football. I love fantasy football too. I'll talk about that too. Hey, it can help with version 10, I'll tell you. <laughs> We've partnered with them as a fan. I get to go in the clubhouses now sometimes and look at how it works. And you just get goosebumps. But let me tell you a moment. The day we went for the presentation, I was anxious more than I am right now. So I told Sam, I said, Sam, you go into the conference room. Let me go wash my face because I just need to be on the top of my game. So I walked into the, the NFL league offices and went to the bathroom and was splashing my face with water. And I looked up and there was this nice tall man next to me, about, about a half a foot taller than I am, looking at me and saying, are you nervous? He was the head athletic trainer of the Baltimore Ravens. He's here. Uh, yeah, I was nervous, but we did a good job with him. I think we've built some good capabilities that are going to help all our customers. We've put in athletic modules and capabilities that we're going to bring into our orthopedics system sometime early next year. And it'll help everyone. So that was one of the moments of excitement. Meaningful use. You know, it's a big deal for some. You get paid to use a certified EHR. But for us, it means a lot more when you use it and you get to a test, because then you actually have the government pay for it. In pure ambulatory vendors, we are now the largest product when it came to meaningful use attestations in the country. And that's because of you. We clap for you, not for us. This is you and your usage of the product that gets us there. We are second overall. It's pretty fantastic. Your use of electronic health records 
can also be somehow mapped or transposed or correlated to electronic prescriptions. I think EHRs have had a phenomenal impact in paper-based prescriptions kind of whittling away. So if you look at that stat, month after month, this is not year after year, look at the growth of e-prescribing numbers on the eClinical Works EHR system. It was 9.47 in just June. It's 10.5 some million in September. This is, again, something that we clap for you. It's also now the second largest e-prescriber in the country. Independent practices, employed practices across the country use, your, use the system every day. So it's not about just having sales. It's about having sales where customers actually end up using the system. A market research came up on overall independence. I have a deep love and affection for this segment of the market. Number one in the country in terms of market share, across the board. Many of you here, solo doctor practices, two doctor practices, three, five. Every one of you is important. It's not just the large ones for me. And why are we growing? Seeing a lot of switch. It's not that the market's 5% in acceptance mode, and it's not that it is in the early stages of adoption. But I would call, in fact, in quite significant mature state of market now, and it happens in many industries, <clears throat> it's happening even in our industry now, where markets start consolidating. Certain vendors disappear, others come, but we're actually past that stage where now you're actually seeing a number of customers moving from vendors that are not investing in their future. The definition of EHRs is also changing. It's not about just using and documenting progress notes. And we'll like to show that today when we get into our product showcase as to the window we see an EHR looks through when we look at our future. So we're seeing a lot of switch. In fact, last month, the number was something like 60%. Six out of 10 contracts were customers that were using an existing EHR that had picked up a new one now. Daily, <clears throat> every day, across the US, across 49,200 locations, a million visits happen in ECW. If you take that number and put it through a whole year, it gets to about 20 to 22% of the total visits that happen in the United States in ambulatory healthcare. And if you take that 22% and you correlate that to other industries, Apple has an 18% market share in smartphones across the world. General Motors and Toyota are somewhere in the 11 to 13. So having a 20 to 22% market share in terms of ambulatory visits is not a small indicator of success. <clears throat> 41 billion in claims processed last year with 98 plus percent acceptance. And you know, many of you were here, some of you were not, but we announced the revenue cycle management capability in our product line which allows practices that need outsourcing of their billing. And it's taken off at 2.9%. We've actually built some new products as well with the RCM capability, a console that as somebody does your back office, you get real-time visibility for your claims, real-time. You get real-time visibility into payments. You get real-time visibility into statements being sent out. No more do you get a report at the end of the month. And if you do the lockbox capability where statements go into a certain address, a PO box, the check actually gets scanned front and back. And you get to see the check as well right in the system. We plan to bring this capability even into the regular product line next year, not just limiting it to RCM customers. We think this is great to have check capabilities and EOB automatically going to a lockbox and being visible within your system. So we'll, we'll expand that capability soon. These numbers are good. I'll throw you one more stat. Join the network. This is where providers communicate with others that are not necessarily using the ECW EHR for referrals. It's free and has been growing exponentially. That number adds up with about 1,000 new members every month. One physician inviting others 
to get onto the network, and over 20 plus percent now are non-ECW EHR users. All in all, there are 200 million patients now in the United States that have seen a doctor that has used eClinical Works EHR, and their records are in digital systems across the country. That is a mind-boggling statistic. I actually looked at the number in Texas. It's one in three. I looked at New York, it was like one in two. It was unbelievable. When you look at these numbers, it says, how, how big is it? But then, when it comes to really taking a step back and saying, does any of this really matter? For some, maybe. For some businesses, maybe. For certain executives and certain entrepreneurs, maybe these are the numbers that excite them. They don't excite me as much, except they're a validation card that things are moving in the right direction. The number that I care about, the number that has driven us in the last 14 plus years since we founded eClinical Works, is often that small one, sometimes two. Every patient, every doctor, not the thousand patients and the thousand doctors. So we actually took a tour. We went this time to different parts of the country to record your stories. You gave us your time. We thank you for it. The stories were recorded in terms of how health IT had helped you in your practice, and then more importantly, how it had helped your patients. Here are two stories, heartwarming, that you need to listen to, and then we'll talk further. Let's play the video. At eClinical Works, we're dedicated to building bridges to better care. As a result, we've uncovered countless stories of our comprehensive EHR making a direct impact in saving lives. Over the past year, we've traveled across the country, visiting numerous practices and hospitals, listening to their life-altering stories. Here are two of those stories where technology helped to save lives. We have uh, some very good examples of times that we've had patients who have been in unusual situations and had requirements that we get information to another provider in a hospital or some uh, other physician. Uh, one story that is true for one of my patients is that uh, he was flying back to the United States from Europe. He got chest pain uh, on the plane and was the plane was diverted to Ireland where they landed and he was taken to a local hospital. They contacted us and we were able to provide them with a medical summary, with a copy of the patient's last laboratory work, with a copy of his EKG, and that enabled them to make a much better analysis of whether the person's complaints were something that required he stay there to be treated, or whether he could safely continue his journey back to the United States. And I'm glad to say that he was able to safely come back to the United States and then be treated here. One of the really compelling features of the clinic works now for us as primary care is the registry and we use a registry to reach out to patients for issues that clinically patients don't always respond to a request to get a colonoscopy in the exam room and we use the registry to uh, reach out to patients who hadn't had a colonoscopy uh, and lo and behold uh, one did respond to our registry request went ahead got a colonoscopy and thank goodness uh, his colon cancer was found at a stage where it's totally cured and this really his life is saved because we had a registry and we were using a clinical works to its full potential this is true it happens more than once sometimes we now take it for granted both you and I, but technology can make a difference. And we expect with the investments we are making now that patient engagement and population health is also going to get even more exciting. Before we go there, can we ask the question, what motivates us? Yeah, we're wondering, what motivates us? You know, the Harvard now teaches a course. And every year I get to go, I'm actually going there again next week. Professor Higgins teaches this. It's a case study on eClinical Works. It talks about ECW and paths to growth. And I went last year, and these are the brightest. This is Harvard MBA. 
they wouldn't take me when I applied. <laughs> and the course is about what should ECW do next? It's achieved success. And every student there, most of them working individuals that have now gone to MBA school said, well, they should go public. They should buy other companies. They should sell. Not one person said, they should just keep doing what they're doing for the last 10 years. So sometimes I wonder, what motivates people? Because that's not the focus that we have at this business. We've never asked the question, how do you build a business so you can sell it? You've always asked the business question, how do we build a business that can have a positive impact, both on the people that work there and the customers that use our products? This sums up the best. This is one of the old pictures from eight years ago on a website. It's still there. We do do big things for our big customers. We do big things for our small customers. But at the end of the day, we care to do all the small things for all our customers. It does not matter. It does not matter if you are a solo provider in private practice. It does not matter if you're the Hospital Corporation of America with 3,000 physicians on eClinical Works. It does not matter if you're working in a health center. It does not matter if you're working in orthopedics practices. It does not matter if you're a student health center. It does not matter if you're a correctional setting. It does not matter if you're a Department of Health. We believe you are a customer of ours. We will work with you to try and achieve the goals that both you and I have established of trying to improve healthcare. You ever ask the swimmer that question, so what motivates them to keep doing it again and again? This is great to do it once. You ever ask an Olympian, why do they do it? Pro athletes, different story. Contracts here. What about an Olympian? There's no contract. Why do they do this? What motivates somebody to go and practice day in, day out, try and be their best, just to win the gold medal? When they practice, the only thing they care about is not the others. The swimmer cares about the clock. As uh, one of my colleagues at work said, the clock's your friend, but you're trying to beat it every time. In a way, that's what we are. We set our own goals. We don't compete against others in this industry. We've never looked at the next lane and asked, who's there, who's swimming? Can we swim faster than they do? We've just asked the question, what can we do to do it faster, better, and cheaper? Because if we do that, and we will win the race. That's what motivates us. It doesn't motivate us to just go ahead and look at what the next competitor, competitor is doing. In fact, if you ask me the question, I don't even look at other companies. It is surprising if I told you this, I have hardly looked at anybody's EHR in this industry. I don't know what it looks like. I don't want to know what it looks like. I want to know what you want the EHR to do. That's all I care about. So yeah, we set our own goals. We set our own mission. So another great question to ask, though, Eric Schmidt asked this question about two years ago when he was talking. I asked, he spoke, and he said, how long is the future? How long is the future? Well, it depends. It depends who you ask, and it depends when you ask. If you ask the CEO of a publicly traded company, he says, uh, next quarter. <laughs> That's the future. If I miss my earnings, I'm gone. For some, it's probably the next day. For some, it's a lifetime. For us, eClinical Works is more than a quarter. For us, it's more than a decade. And it's not that different that we think this way. For me, I'll share a personal story because the theme kind of resonates with it a little bit too today. You know, I grew up in India, but I spent most of my time here. It's been more than half now here. But you learn some things that you rarely forget because they leave a deep impression on you. My dad used to be the design civil engineer, chief engineer of making the railroad bridges in India. Big ones, massive ones. One time when I was with him on one of those train rides, coming back to our hometown, I was a kid, but sometimes those kid stories never leave you. He just made two comments. He said, that's the bridge that I built. You build something in your life that lasts you and outlasts you. We want eClinical Works to outlast the founders that created it. 
not created for one quarter. That's how, that's how long we think our future is. What's the trend though? Where are we going? Last 10 years, it was about putting EHRs into physician offices, and that will continue. It'll be a different trend, but let's look at this for a moment. You've got the hospitals. You've got employed physicians that work at hospitals. A number of you here do that. And then you have the independents and the community, which always outnumber the number of providers in any other setting. The AMA study just came out, 74%. Independence still in the country. That's the case. That is the case. It's a statistic that sometimes surprises you till a real survey gets done. Well, that's great. So care's moving in that direction. I call it care's moving from inpatient to outpatient and patient. Why is it moving from outpatient to patient? Why? Because markets always find equilibrium. They find a place where cost and quality and convenience starts dictating what a consumer does. It's happened in every other industry. It will happen in healthcare. You know there were big wholesalers, massive stores across the country. If anybody here in this wanted to compete in retailing, you had to build a big store, and if you couldn't build one, they'd never have a customer. If you didn't build 50 of them, you wouldn't have a lot of customers. If you never built 500, you'd just never be in the Forbes top 100. And if you never built 5,000, they'd call you insignificant. And then what happened? What happened in that industry? The web came in the industry. The web came in the industry of retailing. And Amazon and eBay found a way to combine all independent businesses in ways that create a marketplace that is sometimes phenomenally large than any one supermarket, any one superstore. It's going to happen in healthcare because it's going to be faster, it's going to be more convenient, it's also going to be cheaper. I call it the Kaiser without walls. These are the three trends you should watch out for. Providers are implementing EHRs, unquestioned but implementing them not just for documenting visits, but streamlining their entire workflow. Providers are also now networking with others in the community because of managed contracts that they're getting into. That says we gotta keep the patient in a way in the referral network. So there is provider to provider communication happening. That provider of care someday might not just be a specialist in a PCP. It might actually be an ancillary service provider like a lab or a diagnostic study. That will be in your network and you will have visibility on price and convenience before you send your patient there. It's coming. But it's not going to stop there. That trend's going to go one step further and you're going to engage your patient in that network. That patient is going to then become the consumer of care and start asking interesting questions. How can I get care? What does it cost? When can I get it? What's the quality? And by the way, can you share the information with me? Because when I'm educated about my care, I can make better decisions. The world's changing. This trend's there. We are investing in that trend with technology. We think it's only feasible if you follow the following paradigms of IT. It needs to be cloud-based so that you can share information. It needs to have mobility in it because it needs to access information from any time, anywhere. And lastly, technology needs to have big data, as we call it, which says, look at data, come up with best decision making, give me quick answers. Give me quick answers so that I can then make the informed decision. We believe our product line encompasses all of these three trends nicely. The investments we talked about last year in the provider space, which we call our core, has resulted in V10 that we're going to showcase to you shortly. V10 is exciting. You better clap after every single feature that we show you. <laughs> you will. Every one of you. 
Next to the core is the community. And we have a product there for managing population health, the biggest used buzzword now. And we'll make it simple for you. And then thirdly, we are making significant investments in the patient engagement platform with Hilo. The reason for this is because we believe that's the trend, that's the industry, that's the future. And if we don't invest in it today, we'll be one of those businesses that does not exist. So to us, the definition of an EHR is changing. I see the electronic health record system of tomorrow, not quote unquote the way we think of it today. It'll be the window, it'll be the desktop, it will be the phone that you want to use on into population health and patient engagement and seeing your patients in. That's the definition of an electronic health record system if you convert all those upper cases into a lower case sentence. What is an electronic health record system supposed to do? Run my practice, allow me to network with the providers in the space, connect to my labs, connect to my pharmacies, connect to my hospital, and also connect to my patients. These are the three products. We plan to show you all three of them this morning. V10 for the provider space, CCMR for the population management space, and Hilo for patient engagement. Don't you ever get up and leave till you see Hilo with what the smartphone can do for you because your patients are going to start asking for it. That's why we kept it towards the end so you don't leave between. <laughs> I know, it's a, it's a good theme. We're going to keep you excited here. I think when these three things work together, V10, CCMR, and Hilo, we are building the bridges for better care, both you and I together. So thank you. Thank you.